Good day everyone, I am Teacher Hasmin and I will be your teacher in TVE9 Bread and Pastry Production. And now everyone is encouraged to keep focus on this video so that you will learn basic knowledge and skills in measuring ingredients. I hope you enjoy as we identify the different tools and materials in measuring dry and liquid ingredients. Follow procedures in measuring ingredients and value the importance of measuring ingredients accurately. What do you think are the secrets of most bakers in producing quality breads like this one, this, and this one? Plus, do you know that bread baking is an art? But there are tips, tricks, and secrets that will help you in your way. One important secret that you should learn today in making quality bread is that we need to get the right amount of ingredients and of course we need to measure them carefully now let us learn about measuring baking ingredients before learning the skills in measuring ingredients you need to know first what are those important ingredients that are to be measured and tools to be used and here are the samples of dry ingredients. The flour, a refined sugar, the custard sugar, and the brown sugar. For our liquid ingredients, we have water, oil, vanilla extracts, eggs, and chocolate syrup. To have better and accurate results in measuring ingredients, we need to use the right kind of tools. And here are the following tools in measuring ingredients. First is the dry measuring cup. That is the picture of a measuring cup. And what is a measuring cup? A measuring cup are used for measuring solid or dry ingredients like our flour, the sugar, the oats, and baking soda and baking powder. Our dry measuring cups are made of plastics, metal, or porcelain. These cups are of different sizes. The bigger one is one cup. The next is one half. One third. And the smallest is one fourth cup. Now let's proceed to the measuring spoons. And that is an example of a measuring spoon. A measuring spoon is a spoon used to measure an amount of an ingredient, either liquid or dry, when cooking. Measuring spoons may be made of plastic, metal, and other materials. They are available in many sizes including the teaspoon and tablespoon. Now this is the sample of a plastic measuring spoon. The other one is a metal. And some of our measuring spoon are made of ceramics. Now, let's proceed to the next tool, which is the spatula. And that is the sample of a picture of a spatula. These are used 
in leveling dry ingredients. Spatula could also be used in spreading the mixture on a tray. And sometimes spatula is also used for mixing soft substances. The next one is our liquid measuring cup. This is the picture of a liquid measuring cup. This cup has markings for measuring ingredients when cooking. It is a vessel used speci specifically for measuring liquids. Now let's proceed to digital kitchen scale. It is a scale which is of quality and gives a correct weight reading. A chef uses a digital kitchen scale which is also called a digital gram scale. It is used to measure the weight or mass of an ingredient expressed in pounds, grams, fluid ounces, or milliliters. We have the other materials which are needed during the measuring process of some of the dry and liquid ingredients and they are called as serving bowls which serves as a container after measuring. Now there you go, we have the proper way of measuring dry and liquid ingredients. Now let's start with the flour. In measuring flour, we have to sift the flour to remove the lumps. Then, spoon sifted flour lightly into a measuring cup, heaping it well over the top of the cup. Do not shake the cup. Then, we need to level off the cup with a straight edge utensils or spatula. In this activity, I will be using a standard size of measuring cup, which is one cup, one half cup, one third, and one fourth cup. Now let's proceed to sugar as one of the dry ingredients. White sugar did sifting only if they are lumpy. Spoon sugar lightly into a measuring cup, keeping it well over the top of the cup. Now let's proceed to brown sugar. If lumpy, press through a coarse sieve to crush the lumps. Then packed into a measuring cup just enough to hold its shape and level off. For the confectioner sugar, you have to sift the confectioner sugar through a sieve also to remove lumps. Then spoon lightly into a measuring cup, level off with a spatula or any straight edge utensils and again we should not shake the cup when measuring the confectioner sugar. For baking powder, baking soda, salt, and spices, we only need to fill the measuring spoon with the desired ingredients. 
level off with a spatula or any straight edge utensils. If baking powder has caked, stir lightly before measuring. And now, let's proceed to the process of measuring liquid ingredients. To measure liquids, we need to place an appropriately sized liquid measuring cup on a flat, stable surface and don't just hold it in your hand. Pour in your liquid until it is just under the line. Squat or bend down so that your eye is exactly level with the graduation. You'll probably notice that the top surface of the liquid is not perfectly flat. It kind of climbs up the walls of the container around the edges. This is due to surface tension and the shape of that top surface of the liquid is called a meniscus. Now let's have the weighing ingredients using digital kitchen scale. Some recipes calls for weighed ingredients like fruits, chocolates, and other ingredients that cannot be leveled off. A digital scale is a high quality scale that gives a more correct weight reading. Now let's learn the steps in using the digital scale. For step one, you need to turn the scale on using the power button. Set your scale to the unit of measurement your recipe calls for, for ounce or for grams, using the mode button or unit button. Then press the button until the display reads the correct measurement. Place your chosen container such as a mixing bowl on top of the scale. You will see that the scale will register and display the weight of the bowl. Press the zero button or tarry button to remove the weight of the bowl and bring the display back to zero. Add your first ingredient according to the recipe instructions. Once your display reads the correct amount, you need to stop. If you add too much, take a little out. Press the tarry button again to zero out the weight of the ingredients you just added. Then begin adding in the next ingredient according to the recipe until the display reads the amount you need. Now let's check what did you learn today. Are you ready guys? Great! Then fill out the box on the appropriate tool or tools in measuring the following ingredients. Let's start with the cake flour. What do you think is the proper tool in measuring cake flour? Correct! Your answer is measuring cup. What about olive oil? Have you got the correct answer? Yes, the answer is measuring glass. What about the whipped cream? Whipped cream is being measured by the use of a measuring glass. Now what about Brown sugar. Right. Measuring cup 
is a proper tool in measuring brown sugar. What about cherries? Have you got the correct answer? Digital scale is a tool suited for measuring cherries. Now let's proceed on the water. How do we measure water? Right, measuring glass is a tool, a proper tool in measuring water. What about chocolate bar? Chocolate bar is measured by the use of digital scale. Baking soda and baking powder. What do you think? Again, is the tool in measuring this kind of ingredients. Right. The answer is measuring cup. But there is another tool that can be used, which is the measuring spoons. What about the margarine? How do we measure margarine as our ingredient? Mm -hmm. Have you got the correct answer? Yes, margarine is measured through a measuring cup. And the last one, how do you measure chocolate ganache? Yes, the answer is measuring glass. Now, let's apply what we have learned. Today, you are going to measure ingredients for making brownies. Listed below are the ingredients for making brownies. You try to perform measuring them using the required tools and you may take photos of this performance and upload it to the forms posted on the last part of this video. And here are the different ingredients that you are going to measure in making brownies. You need a 2 ounces melted chocolates, 1 third cup butter, 1 cup cake flour. You need also 1 fourth teaspoon salt, 1 half teaspoon baking powder, 2 eggs beaten, 1 cup butter in addition to 1 third cup and one half teaspoon vanilla now you are going to submit your photos taken during your performance on the link posted on screen your performance will be rated based on this rubric for the criteria we have the process which is 70 percent and for every process that are evident you are rated according to the following indicators you are going to get a five if all processes given are evident if one process is lacking you get four and if two or three processes are lacking you will be rated three and if you are looking for more than four processes, you get a two rating. So as with sugar, once all processes are evident, you also get a five. If one process is lacking, you get four. Two or three processes are lacking, you get three. And if more than four processes are lacking, you get two. For liquid ingredients, you will be rated also on the following scale indicators. You will get five if all processes required in measuring ingredients are evident. You will get four if one process is lacking. You will get three if two processes are lacking. And if all processes are not evident, you will get two. Another criteria aside from processes, which is 70%, we have the timeliness, which is 30%. If you have submitted your output on time, you will get five. 
if you will submit it one day after the allotted time, you will get four. And you will get two if you submitted your output two days after the allotted time. And two if you submitted your output three days and beyond the allotted time. All in all, your rubric is 100%. That's it. Hope you enjoy and learn a lot from this lesson. I hope to see you on the next class. Bye!